All right, I'm going to talk to you about creativity. You know, behind the lens, what's this all about? You've got cameras, that's a tool. It's a creative tool, but it's still a tool. And who operates that tool is more important than any camera you'll ever pick up. It, because if you get that right, it doesn't matter what camera you're using. And I can prove it. I could give a camera to some of my friends like Bob Holmes or Dan Milner and any of these guys. And uh, it could be a throwaway camera. It could be a disposable camera. They're going to come back with great photographs, I guarantee you. If you gave them a disposable camera, you know, you can buy those with 12 or 24 shots that you just, when you're done with it, you mail it in or take it to a drugstore. Out of those 12 or 24 frames is going to be one exceptional photograph, at least one. Guaranteed. The, the cheapest, crummiest camera in the world, they're going to come away with an exceptional photograph because they know that it doesn't matter what camera you use. It matters how you use it and how you control it, which is your composition, your lighting, your, uh, if you're working with people, your rapport with the people. All those things are what really matters. Now, okay, do, do I just use disposable cameras? Of course not. But the point is don't get stuck to the camera as, as the only thing, which is unfortunately a huge focus out there. And step away from that and realize it's you with your creativity, your vision, that will make the difference. And for that reason, I wrote this book. I mean, for many reasons, but I wrote this book because I'm very interested in what can improve creativity because creativity has to do with, frankly, every part of your life. As a parent, uh, as an educator, um, as a spouse, husband, wife, friend, whatever, but, you know, designing your own home. All these things require creativity. So when you improve creativity, you're, you're literally improving everything across your life, including your photography. So we're going to talk about this. I'm going to do a little case study here. Uh, I want to talk to you about an artist you may or may not be familiar with. I bet you are to some degree, and that is Salvador Dali. This is probably one of his most famous images or paintings. Um, <clears throat> this is from the Museum of Modern Art uh, collection. By the way, if you can't travel to their exhibit in, in New York, go to their go to their online gallery. It's MoMA.org. Very easy to remember. Museum of Modern Art.org, and uh, you'll find all sorts of amazing artists in there. And one of them is Salvador Dali. So you've seen this. This is called The Persistence of Memory from 1931. He developed the surrealistic style of painting. I mean, that became his genre that I think he owned pretty much. And uh, a very talented artist. You can see, I mean, that's not easy technically to paint it and have it look almost three-dimensional. Now, where this... Uh, background is, I believe, is where he lived in Spain in a very beautiful coastal village called Port Ligat. And I'm going to show you some of my photographs from visiting his house. Now, these are not polished photographs. These are, most of them aren't even processed. I'm not trying to display the photographic work itself. I'm just showing you some of the images that I took because I was, I was so struck by what his house was like, what his living environment was like, that I just photographed it. This is one that I've actually used in a couple of books, and I think it, it bears some explanation because there's a lot going on here you may not immediately see. First of all, when you walk into Salvador Dali's house, the first thing you see in his foyer, the entryway, is a huge polar bear, and I thought I had a photograph of it, but I couldn't find it. Polar bear, and he's got beads on, and he's decorating, he's holding something. Every square inch of his house, he turned into some sort of an art form. 
And this was his one of his studio spaces. He had a number of different places where he would paint. And this was one of them. And I think if you look at it, you'll see his display of his brushes and and uh, whatever's in these bottles. Um, and even the background here. I don't know if you can you see this here. I think I need to go to the actual in order for you to see it. Yeah. Can you see my cursor here? Let's see. Apparently, Yeah, there it is. Okay. If you notice what this is, these are light bulb wrappers. You know when you buy light bulbs? They come out of a wrapper. And he actually had these in several places. He must have really kind of been fond of the way it looked. Because several places in his house, he had taken a, a leg of a chair. In this case, it's, I think, a post, a lamp post or something. And he put these wrappers on it. Kind of cool, kind of amazing. You know, here's this artist. Like, why would he? Why would he pick out these wrappers? There was something about them that inspired him, or he he thought was interesting as an art form. And he put them on the leg of the chair here, or whatever that is. And then even the way this is displayed, it has a sort of a aesthetic quality to it, doesn't it? Can you see that? It's not just a bunch of items just kind of thrown on this little table. There is a there is a an art form in how you display anything. You know how you present your photographs. Obviously on the wall, you don't just like tack them up. You know you place them carefully and you place them so that people can look at them, and they're not competing with each other. Something I don't like to see, and I have seen this, is a wall just bam 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 photographs on top of each other, and it's like whoa. <laughs> don't do that because you're not allowing the viewer to just take a, a linear view of your work because that's how we look at things and if you're competing and there's a photograph up here and there's one down here it's like bad composition in composition you don't want your eye competing with a lot of different things you want to let it focus so you'll see that as we go through here I'm just gonna I'll just take you on a kind of a virtual tour of his house so this was one, you know, aspect I, I thought was pretty cool. Um, what's going on here? He has some cases that he held his paintings in or drawings and some kind of sculpture here. <clears throat> I'm not even sure what that is, but there's some sort of sculpture. And then there's, you know, these uh, other containers here. But you get the feeling that everything is sort of accidentally, but on purpose put together. How about that for a dichotomy? It's accidentally purposeful, I guess would be the way to put it. This is a, a photograph I used in, in Create, actually. I turned it from a uh, color to black and white. I thought it made it a little more interesting. And this is one of his, he had many workspaces. And this looks to me where he just did his drawings as opposed to paintings. Now, by the way, I'm going to just bring this up right now. I'll come, I'll come out of this for a second. I, I want you guys, and I recommend this in the, in the book, you have to have a studio, your workspace. That studio could be the size of his desk there, the drawing desk. It could be that small. It could be a corner of, of your apartment. It could be, uh, if you have a whole dedicated room, awesome. Whatever size it is, I want you to put your studio there and think of it as your studio space. Because that's your sacred workspace. That's where you go. You can shut the rest of the world out and work on your art, whether it's writing, painting, drawing, photography, whatever it is. Dedicate a space, and I really don't care how small it is. I mean, I fly on airplanes, and, you know, that little tray <laughs> where I put my computer or, I, or I'm writing in a notebook, that, at that moment, that's my studio space. But you can do better than that. You can find a little corner like this. See, that's only, what, five, eight, six by six, something like that. Find a little corner space where you could put a desk like he has and hang stuff on the background if you want, put your photographic gear down there, whatever it is, 
but make a dedicated space for your photography or whatever art form you're into, okay? Promise me that. I'm not kidding. That's a simple recommendation that will make a big difference for you. Uh, so what else? You know, this is just going through his, again, his home, studio, different spaces where he worked. So he had a number of different spaces depending on what art form he's working on. <clears throat> um, I don't know what this is. It's it's like there's plywood and then he's painting over the plywood. So I don't know where that was going. It looks like it was never finished. I'm not sure. Um, different spaces again. You can't really see this and I should have done a better job, but this there's a slot in the floor that he could raise and lower his paintings while he was working on them. So they were always at eye level and arm level. So he wasn't having to reach up like this. He would raise and lower. Can you see this? The canvas would go down this slot. And I should have taken a better photograph. Uh, you know, there's David <laughs> uh, with a a robe on and some kind of, I don't know what this is, some sort of hornish horn thing and a, and a fencing mask. So he was he was definitely eclectic. He put things together in different ways. Um, you know, painting stuff, supplies, lots of brushes over here. And looks like pigment here. Um, this is a, a paint, I think a self-portrait he did of him painting a, a model in this space. And one of the photographs, I don't know who this is. This is uh, his storage area. You know, and that's an art form too. There wasn't anything that he just randomly threw together. Look at how nicely it's organized. Everything has a little place. But I get the feeling like even the way those boxes are organized, he considered an art form. And this is interesting. This is a mirror in his bedroom. So he had a mirror arranged that so when the sun came up, it would shine in his face and wake him up. I do just the opposite. I try to block the light out. But he wanted to wake up with that first morning light. And it um, came out of this window. This is Port Legat. And reflected over here. And then he had it so it would reflect on his face and wake him up. A birdcage. Chairs. Nobody's going to sit in those chairs. He used them as an art form. Kind of cute. I like this space especially. Um, and I have, I don't currently have a space like this, but I have in the past. You just take your wall space and put your photographs on there. Put prints of your photographs. Put the things that's just for you and you, maybe you can show it to other people. But I used to, in my dark room, have a wall like this. And I would pin up my photographs. I'd pin up little things I wanted to remember. Annie Leibovitz definitely does this. Uh, if you look at her master class, she has wall space that she's just pinned up photographs like this. This is a cool thing that you can do, and you can do this in your own little studio. You can go to a hardware store, lumber store, and get... Um, and I forget the name of it, maybe Jared, you can, there's a, there's a name for it, but it's, it's material that you're, basically it's designed to push thumbtacks or push pins into. I don't know, I can't remember the name, Jared, maybe you can look at it. Uh, but you could put it, uh, I've done that where I just put a few sheets on the wall and then I make my own exhibit. And anytime you publish something, you can put it up like he's done, you know, he's on the I cover of Lot. What is it? I think foam board. If you look that up, I looked that up from Staple. There's like foam board okay. that you can get, and you could put like thumbtacks into that. There you go. Foam board. board. And, you, board. and where do they sell it? Like a stationery, like Staples, or? Yeah, I, I see a listing on Staples that's Staples, like yeah, you could, Home you could Depot. Put anyway, like that. yeah, put that in your studio, right? So you could have your workspace here like this, and then you could have a, you know. Um, a four by eight sheet or, or, or cut it up or however you want to put it. And that's, that's your own personal gallery. It actually is kind of fun. 
So that's, that's the space that I thought was one of the most interesting. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Like the video and please share it and leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.